Suppose that I work for a company that takes orders over the phone. We have a new customer that called in and declares that they would like to make a new order. Let's jump over to the dashboard screen and let's look for the customer. Seems like the customer is not in our database yet, so we'll have to go ahead and add them. Now that our customer has been inserted into our database, we can go ahead and start a new order. We can add a few order details directly from the grid. We can also add order details using the create form. If we need to focus in on order details and see a full screen presentation, we can go ahead and activate see all. We can also view all the order details on the orders detail form. When we go back, the child order details will refresh to include the new record. We can also jump onto customers. We'll select the order and find all the relevant order detail information here. There are a multitude of methods that the user can use in order to modify or insert records. Let's learn what it would take in order to build this three-level master detail and allow our users to easily insert customers' orders and order details all from the same screen. Let's go ahead and create our application that'll allow our users to manage customers, orders, and order details all from the same screen. Let's create a new project and assign a name. Go ahead and press create. Press next to connect to the database. Go ahead and press next to begin creating our required data models. First, let's start with customers. Let's sort customers by company name. Go ahead and save the model. Next, let's do orders. We'll go ahead and sort by order date. Save the model. Let's create a model for order details. We can sort this by product name. Save the model. Finally, we'll need to create some data models for our lookups. We'll start with categories. Sort them by category name. Employees. Sorting by last name. We'll also need products. We'll sort them by product name. Let's grab shippers as well. Sorting by company name.
This should conclude the data model creation step. Go ahead and press next. Let's assign an app name and continue to generate the application. Go ahead and log into the application. You can see that we have individual pages for each data entity, such as customers, orders, and order details. We would like to make it easier for our users in order to manage customers, orders, and order details. We can use data view fields placed on each respective form in order to allow them access to child information. Let's go ahead and add the data view fields. In the app generator, click on the project name and press design. Switch to the controllers tab. Right click on the order details controller and press copy. Paste it on the orders controller. This will create a data view field. Due to the presence of a foreign key relationship between these two tables, the filter field has been automatically configured correctly. Let's go ahead and bind it to the forms. Next, let's go ahead and add data view fields for orders and order details on the customer controller. Let's grab orders and order details, copy the controllers, and paste it onto customers. We can see that the orders data view field has been configured correctly. However, order details does not have a connection to customer. Let's fix this connection. Specify the filter source of order details data view field equal to orders. And specify the filter field as order ID. Save the field and bind the fields to the views. Let's go ahead and see our changes. Let's see our orders. Notice that the bottom of the orders form now displays a list of order details filtered by the order. If we create a new order, the order ID field is not present in the form. It has been pre-configured as the filtered order. Adding a new order detail, we'll assign this order detail to the order. Let's go ahead and see a customer. Notice that customer has a list of orders on the form. We can select an order, and this will show a list of order details underneath. When there are child data views, Using a certain data view as a filter source, then selecting on a record will not open the form, but instead simply select the record and reveal the children. An alternative way of presenting this three-level master detail would be to create a dashboard page. Let's do that now. First, we will need to create a dashboard controller. Assign the name dashboard. Let's grab customers, orders, and order details, copy, and paste it on the dashboard. There are no natural connections to dashboard, so we'll need to configure the filter fields and source ourselves. On order details, 
specify the filter source as orders. And the filter field as order ID. On orders data view field, specify the filter source as customers. Specify filter field as customer ID. Next, we'll need to create a form view. Assign the ID form1 of type form. Assign a label. Save view. And let's bind these data views to the view. Finally, we need to bind this view onto a page. Copy form one. Switch to the pages controller. And create a new page. Assign the name dashboard. Paste the view onto the page. And let's move the page to be the second page after home. Let's make one more change. Double click on the new view one. Let's remove the default action buttons by setting show action buttons to none. Save the view. Let's see our dashboard in action. You can see that our dashboard shows a summary view list of customers. We can select a customer. Scrolling down will reveal a list of orders. We can select an order and it will reveal a list of order details. Let's make a few optimizations to make this page easier to use. Switch back to the project designer, expand view one, to see the referenced view form one. Let's remove the label from the first category. On customers, set the page size to three. If no page size is specified, then the view will automatically render as many rows as will fit the screen. Let's also automatically highlight the first row in the customer's data view. Save the changes. On orders data view field, let's enable inline editing by default by adding the tag inline editing. And set the page size to five. Let's also enable auto highlight first row for orders. Save the changes. On order details, let's also enable inline editing. Set the page size to 10. Finally, let's add some optimizations to the orders and order details forms. Switch to the Controllers tab, expand Orders, expand Fields, and double-click on Customer ID. We would like to copy the ship information in order to provide default values when the user creates a new order. These will be copied from the Customers lookup. We would like to copy contact name into ship name. Copy address into ship address. Let's copy city into ship city.
ship postal code from postal code. And finally, ship country from country. Save the changes. Let's modify the order details controller. When the user selects a product, we would like to copy the product's default price into unit price. Save the changes. Finally, let's add a business rule. Let's add a business rule on order details to set a default value for quantity and discount. Let's use a SQL business rule running in the execute phase of new command. Let's assign values for quantity and discount. Save the business rule. Let's add a business rule on orders. This SQL business rule will run during the execute phase of new command. Let's assign order date equal to the current date. Let's see our changes. We can see that only three customers are visible by default. The first customer has been pre-selected when the user navigates to the page. Same thing with orders. We can see five orders at one time. The first order has been selected, revealing the order details. Notice that inline editing has been enabled by default. Let's go ahead and set up a customer as well as an order with a few order details. Notice that we can start creating orders in order details on this form. We can also use our dashboard. Let's create some order details. Notice that the unit price has been copied from the product record. 